Transformers Earth Spark The Need for Read, the latest episode of what they call the third season of the series, has um, a Bumblebee and Breakdown. Uh, one's behind the, the Breakdown's behind the dome with the Decepticons. The, the, the Titan is trapped in there. And uh, the Mo, the girl, and Bumblebee, and, and, and uh, the, the guy. They go in there. Decepticons find them. They're looking for a comic book, silly premise, and they, um, yeah, the Decepticons catch them. So the comic book manages to survive all this uh, battle action and stuff like that. Get it? Uh, they they pay for it, which is funny. Um, um, there's other people trapped inside the dome that are paying for things in there because yeah, they've been in there for weeks or what? Because that's messed up. Um, Obviously, they're going to have to take that down, the dome. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, this was the first episode of this alleged season. Started on, um, yeah, uh, started a little, a little later. later. Um, anyway, so, yeah, that was kind of the episode. It's fine. Uh, they seem to be, uh, no mention at all of, of the other characters that they, uh, yeah, they, 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 they whitewashed out the, uh, the characters that were friends in this episode, not even in it. Uh, looks like they're going to introduce other ones later that are other characters that are from the show, but it's it's clearly its own universe. Um, yeah, which is kind of a cop out that they don't want to do that. I mean, it's a show, Paramount show. Anyway, so yeah, um, I'm going to go on to the next one. Yeah, so, there's, so that's what it is, and here we're on. Yeah. So this is uh, Transformers Earth Spark Season 3 Episode 2, Attack of the Drive-In Movie, in which case we have the trans tech character Izzy show up again. And we have a, in case you didn't know what that was, um, yeah, she saw the beginning and uh, we have a fake drive-in movie night where for some reason they're watching a 1950s movie called Attack of the Mole People. Uh, they changed it in this one to the Mole Bots, but it's Mole People. Uh, they wouldn't be if this was taking place in 2024. I doubt that they that either the robots or the children would, would even remotely check out a 1950s movie. It's too bad though because some of those are in classics. But yes, this is clearly written by a by a <laughs> ex-gen people and maybe boomers at this point. I wrote this episode. Uh, who were like, yeah, the 50s that was really something back then. And they would have cat's pajamas. Yeah. No, no, they wouldn't have done that. Um, only as a movie buff when I know what they were referencing, but no one else is from there. I have no idea what they're referencing. Uh, <laughs> at the moment. Um, yeah, so, yeah, they, 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 uh, but but it's also Wonka, the first Willy Wonka movie, Chocolate Charlie and Chocolate Factory, because they have a machine that can transport you into the movie or out of the movie. It's also Tron. So there's like, the, the, so they have this transform either way to, to go inside the movie and come out uh, the the and also in the next generation episode where they're on the holodeck and they put Moriarty in the cube and they made the joke about it being inside a small television box on the screen watching the thing like it's television so you're literally television watching television watching television yes um very cheesy though uh, they have a date and in the story they uh they, yeah, they go on a date but it, everything goes wrong uh, ending with uh, the uh, the date kiss thing. <laughs> um, sure. Okay, this episode is, is basically also a ripoff of a. We're probably never going to see it. The location episode. But yes. Um. No, you're not going to see that. But but yeah, it's the classic idea of what the teenagers in a movie theater are going to their first date. So it's not on location. It's it's that's classic. You know. For, since. Since uh, yeah, that kind of thing happened, drive-in movies, drive-in movies don't technically exist anymore. Uh, yeah, they had a slight resurgence, but they don't. Um, so that makes this very dated. Uh, drive-in movies were going out of style uh, and were and were niche uh, in the in the well, they were big in the seventies. They came back a little bit in the 
in the 90s with the resurgence of let's do stuff from the 60s and 70s again. Uh, and there was a drive-in, a drive-in, and there was one in Capitol Avenue. Years ago, they rebuilt to open it up in the in the, in the 90s. And they were showing some Star Trek and Star Wars on that, but but yeah, they're, they're, but in this movie they don't go to a drive-in. They they simulate a drive-in with their Tron machine that apparently can 3D print you in and out of a movie, um, which means that technically they're 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 copies of themselves afterward. And you had some of uh, the Decepticons, the uh, uh, Soundwave's people, laser beat buzz on them, doing things. Something a little like Clint Cowpoke there. Um, but yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, Attack of the Drive-In movie, which is also a movie reference, that, that particular, incidentally. Anyway. This one was called The Great Escape. One where they they go into the the, the the multibots go into an escape room by the fair maestro, who has to be the the most uh, uh, flamboyant, fruity character since Starscream, even more so. Um, and somehow he traps them in an escape room thing, reminiscent of about ten years ago when all those escape room movies came out. And of course later Squid Game's kind of similar. Um, haven't seen Squid Game though, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, the the panic room, escape room, things like that. Yeah. Um, uh, but with the carnival guy who wants to make them part of his ride, which does make them, that sound kind of disturbing and twisted. Um, yeah, he's, he's going to ride them. Uh, yeah, it's a little, little, little strange. And he's the fair maestro because he runs a fair. Not well, because he's, yeah, they, they, they have to reference that in there because they thought of a dumb name for the guy. Um, so yeah, that was um, <laughs> that was that one. Um, they they all they the teamwork eventually leads to them not winning, but then getting trapped because because he wasn't supposed to do it that way. They end up getting trapped somehow. He somehow has the ability to magic them to different places. It doesn't they don't explain how that work would work. They don't just arrest him, but they do put him in the game at the end, which they capture him. So, <laughs> so he's, playing his own game. Why would he play his own game? He'd be like, oh, um, yeah, that would be stupid. I'll be trapped in my own game. Yeah, but if he has magic power, he can magic himself out. We don't know what happened to Cosmos. It got away, but we don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, from being a ride last time. Uh, yeah, they're, they're trying to do a new villain that's more interesting than Mandroid, but he's not. They're just desperately trying to have a villain, and it doesn't really work. Uh, Shockwave earlier was better, but but yeah, they they just yeah I, I can see what they're doing. They're just they're trying to be hip, but it it doesn't quite work as a story. They even have a montage at one point, and they call it a montage, and they do the montage thing. Clearly reminiscent of the late '80s, early '90s movies, which would throw in a montage during an action scene. It's completely out of place here because, well, this series, although it has action in it, is not technically an 80s action movie. It, it, it just isn't. Uh, it, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Anyway, so, yeah. Um, yeah. So, this is uh, Transformers of the Earth Spark. Uh, Episode 4, No Soldier Left Behind, Prowl arrives in his spaceship, flies through the grid somehow, lands in the, in the dome. Uh, they have to go into the dome, Prime and Megatron and the Maltos, two of them, you know, the kid, two kids and the mother, go into the dome with, with Twitch and, uh, and, and uh, the other guy. I keep forgetting that other guy. That looks like Prowl's bike, but he's not. I keep forgetting that guy. Spaz or something. Anyway, they go inside there, and they're like, uh, and they they reveal that that's where the com that's how she got the comic book. They should have asked that. How did she do that? Sleep to get into the thing, which means they have an in and an out. I mean, now they have an in and an out ship, so they they have a spark regeneration key, kind of like an all spark key on the ship. Prowls alone, uh, he brings this giant Autobot ship. Looks kind of like the Autobot Ark. 
Uh, and uh, and the, uh, and the Decepticons take the ship, basically, and fly off through the, to they get through the, the thing and escape. And then just a little bit of a, a tryst there at the end. Megatron almost acts like Megatron again briefly a few times out there. To, um, but, but also gets shot at. Yeah, they're, they, it, 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 um, yeah, obviously this is a completely different timeline, for one thing. They're on the East Coast, Prowl's alive, he wasn't killed in Transformers the movie, and he's not animated Prowl, he's not the other Prowl, he's not the bike one, he's a different Prowl. He flies, um, but he's a car that flies, like a DeLorean Back to the Future kind of thing. Um, yeah, um, yeah, he's captured more Decepticons and that other one's dead. So that's his story. Of me. Yeah, the Decepticons get away. And yeah, it, it was fine. Uh, the, still, the facial expressions on the Prime and Megatron are a little weird. Um, uh, the animation, other than that. Uh, yeah, and we also had, we also had um, you know, uh, appearances by our main characters as well. Yeah, it was, it was perfectly salvageable as a kid show thing. It wasn't, it wasn't great, it wasn't bad, it was just sort of there, fine. New introduction of a new character, new sort of bounty hunter type prowl. He's not really a cop so much as a, as a detective bounty hunter guy. Uh, they're probably channeling the Mandalorian. But yeah, alright, so... So in this episode, they figured out how this hyper transport shuttle thing, round bridge works. The the Malta, they the Twitch Evan suddenly uses it. Well, an evil thing like a torque type of thing has taken over the Teletran One computer G One reference and done another G One reference, the Hate Plague, and re-released the Hate Plague sort of a space virus uh, that works on heat, although it didn't originally. And the wisdom of the ages of the Matrix is what stopped it in the original one. This is this is a heat and cold. Cold stops it in this version. So there's no Matrix going on. Um, they, they, yeah, they, there are a lot of main characters fighting each other doing the whole or we've turned evil for a little while kind of thing going on. That's typical of that type of story. Oh, well, they've turned bad, but it's the virus. Ah, it's probably also a reference to the COVID from three years ago. Uh, and other things, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just, you know, it's fire and ice. Uh, yeah, and possibly a reference to a manga from the time period. There, there's also a, uh, there's a, there's a really, really bad dad joke in it about breaking the ice, and it doesn't work because they wouldn't know what the expression is, so by saying the joke, oh, break the ice, what planet are you from, oh, how would the Dinobot know the expression to misinterpret the expression? He wouldn't. He'd just be like, what? But, yeah. Oh. Well, apparently this episode is very silly track. Like, <laughs> Prime and Ringatron trust each other again. Mmm. Got very bromance at the end. Deciding they were going to fight again. Um, mm, and RC and RC and, and Alita in there as well, going after Twitch was, you know, attacking, them. Uh, and then being friends at the end because of the the hate plague or whatever it was or space virus or whatever, um, it's a version of the hate plague I guess, but not quite. Um, yeah, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, this one uh, called "The Truth Is Out There," a very X Files y story. Gives you, yeah, the kids these days are gonna know the X Files. No, they're not. <laughs> maybe, maybe the remake uh, a couple of years ago. But yeah, the the obvious reveal, of course, uh, knowing the Izzy character from Lexicons and Bush is that uh, she's in who she claims to be. She's more than meets the eye. So there you go. They're gonna do that. They're gonna make her a pretender. She's a pretender, like the, like the other one, the, the Quintesson pretender, which is interesting. Um, yeah. So uh, as it turns out she's actually, yeah. It's like they're watching the mush, all Transformers mush, and they've done a, you know, they got up to that one, and they put that one in there. Animation should have taken a while, so it was Lexicons. That was that one. Um, the indirect character on the on the on the show. She was one of the 
one of the uh, ones. Here she's uh, in a humanoid form. But in that one she was a random character on Planet Tarn in that one episode with Springer. Yeah, it's a really, really obscure episode. I think also versions of her appeared earlier in the, the jazzy episodes, the sibling rivalry in the other one, as a different character. But it's, yeah, yeah it's it's the that archetype. It's that whole, who is a good or evil type of thing. When a song looks a little bit like Raksha, which is funny. Um, <laughs> when it transforms into the Quintesson, they have to go after it. And they discover the truth is, ooh, that's the, that's the, yeah, she's actually the alien, which... Uh, I didn't see it coming quite the way they did it. They did like an actual good Pretenders Transformers episode, similar to the Japanese ones years ago, and that was fine. Um, next is episode seven, and uh, yeah, it, it worked. It was, it was, it was, uh, yeah, fine. Um, yeah, one of the better ones of the season. Hmm. So. Okay, this is a Judgment Day. The two-part finale of uh, the story. Uh, the Quintesson mothership arrives. We do like a the, the kids go into the mothership to rescue some of the Terrans get captured on the ship. We do the Shark Tacon thing from Transformers the movie, but it's on the ship. Uh, they use the technology to escape the Shark Tacon thing. The, the other ones go to re rescue Terratronus. Uh, uh, Twitch gets injured. Uh, some other ones get injured, but then are repaired. Uh, uh, she's repaired later. Uh, they, they, uh, the, the evil Quintesson judge is after the the, uh, the the bracelets, the wrist things. He never does get them. Um, so yeah, spoiler. Uh, yeah, this whole review is a review of a series that just came out. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's uh, basically uh, shared hallucinations from uh, well, Transformers much from years ago. But, yeah. Um, a couple of years ago. It's basically that. There's a Titan fighting a giant ship at the end. That's what happened. It was an SDF ship fighting a, some Titans. That's literally what they did, but they did it better than we did it. We didn't we didn't have an animation studio with with uh, hundreds of uh, staff animating stuff over there in probably Japan and here and couldn't putting everything together to a sort of a CG thing. Um, we didn't have that. We just had one guy doing all of the effects. <laughs> the whole thing. Um, <laughs> occasionally, Mark's cars would show up. Some of us too, but but not for the effects. Um, but yeah. So uh, so this one has uh, yeah and and, and uh, yeah it's been it was revealed that the the uh, Raksha type character was a pretender. The girl Izzy. Uh, apparently, she's also she's actually from. There was a cameo by it. someone similar in Lexicons and someone similar in All Transformers Mesh. But it wasn't exactly their name. It was just kind of similar. Uh, it wasn't that, but yeah, pointed out. No, that's not really her name. That was that was a different different name. But it's close enough that that character has that yeah that sort of I'm gonna trick you kind of thing. I liked that the uh, the uh, they had the, the represent the the, the the evil clone good clone thingy. Uh, that uh, yeah they they bring back the Chaos Darrens. They arrest Starscream. Uh, they they have the they this. The sword is useful. The axe is useful again. Um, the zap axe thing. Uh, they're, they're, they they revive them using the cyber key thing that was connected to it. Uh, it all works out in the end, basically. Uh, they they can keep their uh, wrist thing. I think this is first half of season three, so technically there's going to be eight more, as far as I know. Um, but who knows how long it'll take them to do another eight of them after this. This was the premiere that there, um, yeah. So this was, um, yeah. There were a couple of cheesy episodes, but now it all makes sense that they were there to make it look a little goofy. So if you used it, even a little bit of kid logic, you'd get, oh, okay, she's really the pretender villain the whole time. Uh, if you were thinking about it, or even even remotely a little bit, um, <laughs> yeah. So there we are in the end. There's a, uh, yeah. Uh, they they do some more puns and references that kind of work, kind of don't. Uh, they they do their thing. They do their thing. Things that happen in in and, uh, and it ends with a, a heroes and villains fighting. The Decepticons took off in the Autobot ship, so there aren't very many Decepticons left. That is also similar to all Transformers Mesh and to Lexicons, in which some of the Decepticons took off there. But as if you were in that one, 
and lexicons, the the the, the dirty dozen characters who've been following around the the magnificent seven slash dirty dozen character. They're they're they start out dirty dozen, end up magnificent seven. They were following a uh, some of them died. They follow uh, the, that, that in that universe. They were actually in the other one the whole time. So on the other side of the gate, and then legacy they. Close the gate, and we have the pretenders there too, which is a similar to this as well, um, because it was it's similar. Um, that, that we don't see very very many other primes. Of the Titan is activated and walks around. It fights the Quintesson ship, destroys it. Um, that that's what we would have done. Um, yeah. So well, so there's your Calicat ending episode there. I didn't write it. It's just very similar to stuff we've done. Um, so yeah, that's my review of the whole. Uh, binge watch the entire thing. Oh, no. uh, here on the, uh, the uh, yeah, it's barely the twenty sixth of October. Anyway, so that that was a uh, Earth Spark. They do bring back Nightshade, and she does do something useful to help out the uh, the Spark cast Terrans, and then the other thing, and then to help the heroes get through the, the ship and everything. But they do not address at all any of the things the right runners complain about at all. They just don't go there, which is unfortunate that they don't go there. They bowed to criticism and said, oh, we're not going to address that again. It's like, okay, you guys are kind of copping out there, but but that's all right, I guess. Anyway, so it ends, you know. <laughs> anyway. Hmm. Uh, yeah. uh, Gwyneth's on Pretender, huh? Hmm. <laughs>